crackling, and when you ever hear crackling, it's a bad chord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Maybe we'll get him saved before this song, sir, is over with. Glory to God. Why don't you lift your hands and praise the Lord tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's see if we can sing that a little bit. What? What key is that? Why don't you lift your hands and praise the Don't you lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Thank Him for His mercy. Thank Him for His love. For great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. Why don't you lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Why don't you lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Thank Him. Thank you for love. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke and lifts the burden. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your name. Thank you for the oil that flows tonight. Thank you for utterance. Hallelujah. Thank you for auction. Thank you for the Spirit's inspiration. Oh, hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise in your house tonight. Glory to God. You're worthy of all the praise. We magnify you. We praise you, Father, tonight. You're a good God. You're a mighty God. You're a healing God. You're a delivering God. You're a saving God. Hallelujah. And we worship you in the spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We come into this house gathered in His name to worship Him. We have come into this house gathered in His name to worship Him.
It's like I was in a whole new level, a whole new realm of revelation. Today is a revelation day. I'm telling you now, I could just pray, and the more I prayed, the more I saw into the spirit realm. And I said, well, I do believe, hallelujah, that we've changed realms uh, because I certainly did feel the shift. Hallelujah. I saw it in the spirit every time I began to enter into his presence today. I started just seeing things, knowing things in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And and that's the uh, that's the discernment we got to have. The discerning of spirit simply means seeing into the spirit what round into the spirit world. Hallelujah. And I thank God for his touch, his presence tonight. Hallelujah. I thank you for the movement of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the spirit ministry. I thank him I don't have to depend on anything but the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the presence of the Lord and in his presence, his fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. He's altogether lovely tonight in his people. Hallelujah. And he's speaking a living word. Hallelujah. And everybody that hears it is receiving the life effects of it. Glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Amen. Praise God. I uh, uh, had an interesting uh, time when I got to North Carolina. I told my wife, I think she thought I was crazy because I texted her at 10 o'clock and said ah, good night. She said, my God, he don't never go to bed before midnight. But I tell you, I felt like if I didn't, I was falling asleep at 8 o'clock in the evening. I mean, terrible, hard sleep. Wake up at 9, about out of my head, didn't know where I was at. <laughs> and so anyway, I just said to the Lord, well, I'm no good to the people like this, and I'm certainly no good to you. I said, either you'll have to quicken me or you'll have to put a deep sleep on me and get me up early so I can prepare for this service. And I believe he'd do it, so I never even set an alarm or called down to the desk. I just knew the Lord when he got ready. Glory to God would, would talk to me. Hallelujah. And the Lord got me up at 5 a.m. And I got up, got all my books out on the bed. And I tell you, I've begun to see things in that Word and see things in the uh, Spirit. Hallelujah. And uh, I mean right up till the time I did run out the door. My breakfast room was right across from my room, so I ran over and eat some breakfast. About 7, come right back in, got back, made that de bed my desk and pulled a chair up to the side of it. And I just sat there till I looked down and said, Oh, I better get up and get a bath and get ready to get to church, amen, but I'll tell you, I just knew he'd wake me up yeah. when he was ready to talk, amen. Amen. amen, and if he's not talking, there's no sense in me laying there trying to push something out when it's not there, so I said I believed it, so it takes a lot of faith for me not to set an alarm because I won't wake up, but bless God, I just knew it, I knew he was going to wake me up and talk to me, and I trusted him, hallelujah. And he did it. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. We're going to get ready to give to God tonight. If you'd be so kind as to get an offering ready uh, to bring to the Lord. Amen. Everybody stand and let's say it together tonight. This is my seed. God gave it to me. I'm now reinvested into his great kingdom for the work of the ministry. And I expectingly await a return harvest in every area of my life. God bless you tonight.
make her play for herself. While uh, you sing it to her, hey man, she tell you how old she is. I'm not going. I'm not going to tell her. Tell her. Praise the Lord. She just two digits. That's all. Praise the Lord. Hey man, let's sing to her. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh, I'm quieting down for that last note. Hey, man. Hallelujah. Hey, man. That's the day the Lord saw fit to release you from the heavenly kingdom into this earthly kingdom. And He released you for a purpose. And every one of you are ordained of God from the foundation of the world to walk into something. Amen. And that is the reason you're here tonight is because God has exposed you to a supernatural word. And once you hear that trumpet, you're never the same again. Amen. And you cannot accept any other sound after that except the sound of the trumpet of God. The prophetic voice. Amen. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Well, we've got everybody back home for now. Amen. We don't promise when we'll take off again. Hallelujah. Glory. I drove through snow coming to the airport. I got to see about a half hour of that. was enough to satisfy me. It was pretty. And it didn't have time to stick long enough to get nasty. And it was blowing too bad for it to stick. Amen. I got on top of that mountain, got out of that car, turned my car in, and I thought the wind was going to blow my head off. That was the hardest wind. And then the guy got on and said, uh, we apologize in advance for a rough first flight. And he weren't lying, brother. It jerked and bucked and pitched. And, amen. And uh, I'm telling you what, uh, I, was, I was glad to get on calmer. But I don't mind to tell you, I can take a hard jerk better than I can take a slow dipping all the time. That, that don't do set well with me. Amen. But I was glad to see that pretty snow, amen, on that mountain. Lord have mercy. Nothing more beautiful. Pretty, 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 pretty. I'm telling you, them, them mountains is beautiful right now. I'm just breathtaking. Everywhere, every which direction you look, just beauty, beauty, beauty. That's right. You see the snow on the top, tip top, amen. Make you want to get on higher ground. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles tonight, uh, the 25th chapter of the book of Isaiah is where we're going to dive off because you can't swim till you dive off get in the water. So we're going to launch out from this, this place tonight in the 25th chapter of Isaiah and we're going to read in verse 6 through 8. Hallelujah. And then we're going to go to Esther if I can preach it, sir. Amen. In time. Hallelujah. I heard all good reports from Sunday. Good preaching. Amen. Amen. Heard all the messages were great. And I'm thankful for that. I'm glad for that. We had wonderful services. Praise God. Sunday night had a good shouting service. And we got to dancing in the spirit and the hollering and the talking in tongues and getting blessed and prophesying and praise the Lord. Sixth verse of the 25th chapter of Isaiah. And in this mountain, now we all know this mountain is the house of the Lord, the mountain of the house of the Lord, shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast. Glory be to God. I don't believe the Lord knows how to spread a small table. Solomon's table, well, glory, had hundreds of of different items of provision for a day. 
The Bible said his daily provisions. My God. Was so great that poor old Queen of Sheba. Glory to God. Fell out of her chair. She passed out. Or she fell out. She couldn't even handle it. And when they left the table. The way they ascended to the house of the Lord. When they left the table. Just blew everything. Just surpassed anything. That her great kingdom had ever seen. Glory to God. So he said I'll make a feast of fat things and a feast of wines settled on the leaves. Fat things, now look at how rich God's going to make, full of marrow. Glory to God. That, uh, that means rich. That means uh, strength. That means maturity. That means uh, it's going to be life. The Bible even talks about the word being helped to all of your flesh and marrow. To your bones. Hallelujah. And we know that even the sword of the Spirit, according to Hebrews, can get into the joints and into the marrow. Hallelujah. The Word can go deep tonight. Deep enough to make a difference. Glory to God. Deep enough to cause a change. Deep enough for you to experience something that you've never had before. The Word has got to be more than bread alone. It's got to be a perceiving Word that is going out of the mouth of God, inspired by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Breathed upon your souls so that it gets down into the joints and marrow and it stops all of that division in your walk and the piercing asunder, getting rid of that that divides your soul and your spirit and bringing it back into harmony. Yeah. Amen. And so he says that this is what's going to happen when you get into this feast. When you come into this feast, he's going to destroy in this mountain the face of covering, glory to God, off of the people. Praise the Lord. And he's going to, uh, and he says it is a veil that is spread over all the nations. And he will swallow up death in victory. My God, folks, the real Word of God will cause victory to swallow you up until anything that's working against you will be powerless over you. Amen. And the Lord will wipe away tears and He don't just mean He's going to get His little napkin and blot your eyes. He means He's going to wipe out whatever caused you to cry in the first place. And He's going to take the rebuke of His people away. Hallelujah. For the Lord hath spoken it. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord has spoken it. Now, you cannot study the Bible, read anything in the Bible without running into this word feast. The whole Word of God is centered around feasting. Uh, and, and feasting is never done in sorrow. Never. It's always a time of rejoicing. It's a time of celebrating. It's a, even when <coughs> excuse me, even when Nehemiah was celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles and the people tried to make it a sad day. Yeah. He said, oh no, you're not going to bring that morning up in here because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And he said, this is a day of rejoicing. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Even when the four leprous men were feasting, after they came in and found Syria had fled the scene and all the spoil was there for the taking, they sat down and began to feast and they said, we do not well. This is a day of what? Glad tidings and we do not well to keep it to ourselves. Can you say praise the Lord? And when that feast was announced, they trampled the king's hand in the gate. Running to get to the feast. In the earliest parts of the Bible, it's, it's somewhere along Genesis 21, I think it is, that we find that uh, Abraham, in the day that Isaac was weaned, prepared a very great feast. So when you can start eating table food, when you can come to the table, when you can start to feast, then you're getting weaned off of the milk. And Isaiah 28, is it, says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? 
And who shall he cause to understand doctrine? Him that is drunk, weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Can you say amen? So in order for people to understand the, 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 the uh, validation of feasting, you have got to get in the mature realm of word and stop wanting this fluffy light meals. Glory be to God. Snacking's all right, but at dinner time I don't want a peanut. I want something that has sustenance to glory be to God. I'm telling you, we're in the high noon hour of the Spirit tonight, and we're not going to just have a snacking. We're going to enter into a feasting time with the Lord, and we're not going to just drink milk. We're going to have the strong meat. Then you say, praise the Lord. The strong meat of the Word. Amen. And so we find out in this feasting that it's extremely significant in the Word of God from the beginning. In fact, God even instituted with Israel a covenant of three feasts a year and demanded that the males appear before God three times a year. You shall come before me. Three times a year you shall celebrate Paso. Three times a year you will well, glory to God. You're going to eat the first fruits at Pentecost. Glory to God. That's a down payment on your redemption. It's a Holy Ghost baptism. Every time you see any of the gifts manifested, hear somebody talk in tongues, see somebody dance in the Spirit, see people slain under the power of God, it's God's testimony and guarantee to this earth that He will have a people who will come into that full level of redemption. That's the earnest. That's the down payment. That's the first fruits. Pentecost wasn't the end. That was the first fruits. The tabernacle is a feast of ingather. Glory to God. That's when everything comes to fruition while the husbandman hath long patience waiting on the precious fruit of the earth till he receive of the earth and the latter rain. And brother, it is the day of latter Lord and rain. It's a day when both have met together and there's a marriage of the Word and the Spirit in this hour. He's dumping out on His people. It's the fruit of the earth. It's the signs of God that have got to come forth in full power. And demonstration. Not walking the temple every day holding their mama's hand. But full grown sons. Well, glory to God. I said full grown son. That's going to feast. Amen. Our evangelical and fundamental friends tell us that, 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 that we're to remain in the feast of Passover. But that's not so. But our Pentecostal friends is just as bad and just as belligerent to tell us we're to remain in the Pentecostal realm. Shout me down now. But that's not the whole truth. That's only part of the truth. And when we know in part, we prophesy in part. Oh God, but when that which is perfect is revealed, we come on into another dimension in God and begin to preach fullness. We began to preach perfection. We began to preach maturity. We began to preach overcoming. Come on now. Hallelujah. And so when we... Uh, you know, we know in the Passover. My God, nobody don't even get the whole gist of that. Ain't nobody walking in full redemption tonight. Well, glory. Ain't done it. They, they shall, but they ain't yet. Because they still died. And they still broke. And they still doing without. Hello. Amen. And we still fight the emotions. And we still fight our whatever you call them. Glory to God. I don't like the word battle, so I don't use it. Glory to God. I fight worse than battles sometimes. I fight hell. Just to stay saved all day. Hallelujah. They some days, folks, if it wasn't for just me knowing what I know, I'd have been almost to told, talked to, and convinced I wasn't even in the kingdom. But I knew I knew better than that. So when I can't walk by what I feel, I walk by responsibility. I know what He's done for me. And I stand when I don't know what else to do. I stand there for. Oh, what I know. 
until that which is perfect has come. Yeah. Now, folks, the one perfection has come. Yeah. Jesus is a perfect high priest. Yeah. And now he's awaiting on his people. Glory be to God to come on up into hither into that sun realm. Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord. Where no dragon shall abide. For the sure word now has conquered. And it's in him we have our life. As the kingdoms of men crumble, have no fear, just stand and see that the kingdom of our Father is brought forth in you and in me. Amen. So I I, I learned when I studied that Passover means more than, than, than just a little salvation. It, first of all, Passover means to walk on or dance on top of. Praise the Lord. And if we go back to the night that God instituted the Feast of Passover, it was not an easy time. The, 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 the reign of feast and plagues of hail and plagues of fire and plagues of lice and plagues of fraud have not delivered Israel. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. There's only one way Israel could be delivered out of Egypt, and that was by the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. And the Lord said unto them, This night my death angel shall pass through this land, and the firstborn of every man, glory to God, whether Egyptian or Israelite, will die. But he said, Tell, speak thou unto the children of Israel, and say right here in the middle of your calendar, I'm announcing Happy New Year. I'm going to make a new year right now. Glory be to God. Amen. God is not limited to our timetables, our calendars, our 30 day, whatever. Glory to God. Maybe you like to go through seven steps to the ten ways to the five month program to deliverance. I don't believe it has to be that way. I believe God has instituted a feast right in the middle of my family. Glory be to God. And has announced that this shall be a beginning unto me. Praise the Lord. And so he said to them, there'll have to be a lamb in every house. Yeah. And he said, if you can't eat it all, get your neighbors over there to help you eat it. Yeah. And he said, don't you uh, eat it sodden. Don't water it down. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then he said, don't eat it raw. Right. Yeah. Well, glory. Brother Howe said that means if it ain't finished work, don't preach it. Yeah. Don't preach no raw gospel. Yeah. Hallelujah. No, how did he say eat it? Roast it with fire. Yeah. Brother, it's going to take some fire. Yeah. Some, I mean some holy fire. Yeah. Some holy ghost fire. Yeah. Some real, oh glory to God, ignition yeah. by the Spirit. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You're going to have to grow to a day where you don't have to be pumped up and primed That's up right. and shook That's up. That's right. That's right. Just to, just to get in the spirit a little bit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. These preachers died young because they killed themselves trying to keep their people happy. I love you, but if you ain't happy, don't expect me to salt with you. I got victory, brother, sister. If I can get up with what I face sometime and have victory, you can. And I can't waste a service trying to get you happy. Yeah. That ain't my job. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. My job is to come here in the Spirit already yeah. and have a fresh word from heaven. Yeah. And as so is every other preacher's job. Yeah. Hallelujah. But many of them will never get there mm -hmm. because they're too busy trying to please Adam right. and get him to like him. Adam ain't never going to like the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost are changing. Glory to God. Can you say praise the Lord? It'll make you grow up. It'll make you quit whining. Can you say amen? How are you going to pray through and all you got some wine? Ain't going to do it. Never going to happen. The Lord said, burn it with fire. Then he said, glory to God, when you get ready to eat it, Eat it with your shoes on. Yeah. Eat it with your robe on. Yeah. And eat it with your staff in your hand. Because right. as soon as you swallow it, and as soon as it gets down in you, yeah. you're coming out. Right. 
And I'm telling you all tonight, as soon as you eat it, and as soon as you swallow it, and as soon as it gets down in here, you coming out. As long as it's just sitting on the table, you ain't going nowhere. But if you'll digest this Word of God tonight, you're going to have not just bread alone, but there's going to be a Word that proceeds up out of you. And you're coming out. And you're coming out with silver. And you're coming out with gold. And they're not going to be one feeble. You're coming out healed. Somebody say praise the Lord. See, if you eat the real feast of Passover, glory to God, you'll come into the realm of divine miracles. Because it's a miracle that three and a half million people who were slaves to the brickyard bowed and bent over and crippled up from all those years of working all their life instantly in one moment was completely and totally healed by the power of God. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. They didn't have time to run down their favorite preacher to lay hands on them. No, sir. That Passover meal delivered them. Feasted. Amen. And, of course, he went on in the other two feasts. We don't have time to go into all that. What we're concentrating on, well, I'll say one more thing about the Feast of Passover. When Jesus got ready to celebrate the Feast of Passover, He showed them disciples that there's a new way of the Spirit. Yeah. It's got to work. See, He told them, go in town and you're going to find a man mm -hmm. with a pitcher. Yeah. And it's that. Men didn't carry water in that day. The women carried the water. Exactly. Well, glory. Yeah. But God done something He never done before. He put a man on that street with him. When they found him, they said, uh, he told them, come for all things are ready. Yeah. And he took them to the upper room. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing was spread. Yeah. Well, glory. Yeah. He showed us how to come into a realm where we don't have to cook the food, make the food, and try to produce the food. All we do is come in to rest. Yeah. And the food's already on the table. Yeah. Well, Can you say praise the Lord? One of those songs we sing said, uh, 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 as we stand here in the holy place with our lamps all trimmed and clean what's that next line there is food upon the table anytime we want to eat hallelujah yeah. see I've come to tell you tonight that the table is the way to the throne yes, yeah. the table is the way to the throne you won't get to the mercy seat without you stop by the table of showbread and on the table of showbread there's two rows of loaves on that table that's two witnesses Amen. And on those every seven days, every seven days, they destroyed them and put fresh ones on them. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we find David in one of his crucial hours of, of, of need when Saul was pursuing him and was on his heels. He took his men. You remember that? Mm -hmm. What was that uh, Abigail's husband uh, name? Funny name starts with an N. Nabal. And David stopped with his men and said to Nabal, Help us. We're hungry. Well, glory to God. I'm telling you, church, man can't feed you what you need. It's got to come by bread, not by bread alone, but by every word. You can go anywhere you want to, but that don't mean you're going to get fed. you got to go where the Spirit is speaking. And uh, Nabal said, why should I help you? And then let Saul come in here. And, and he dogged them. He talked ugly to them. I mean, he cursed them. He didn't want them there. But oh, Abigail was hit back and she heard it all. And she knew David was God's man. Glory to God. She knew he was God's choice for that throne. And David went on down the road to the to the temp tabernacle there in the temple. And the priest, I believe his name name was uh, Abiathar came to the door and, and David said we're starving we've got no strength glory to God and he said have you got anything to eat and I want you to hear me tonight the, the priest said we haven't anything except holy bread glory to God Only kind of we, all we got is holy bread all we got is sanctified bread <coughs> and David said these men have been with me they hadn't been out running with women. That's what he told them. They hadn't been out drinking. They hadn't been out doing all. They've been with me. Yeah. Yeah. 
And the priest said, well, but I guess you need it. He went and got it. He ate it. And said, the, the power of God come on David. And David said, do you have any weapons here? And the priest said, I've only got one. What is it? He said, the sword that you cut off Goliath's head with, I wrapped it in an ephod and hid it away. Glory to God. And the Lord put that sword back in David's hand when he ate of that holy bread. Amen. In the meantime, Abigail grabbed her up cakes of raisins and fresh figs and loaves of bread. My God and told the servant, don't tell my husband nothing. And she rode with the company out and met David. Jumped down off of there. Boy, some of you going to have to just stand up for what God showed you. Woo, hallelujah. If he showed you, he'll take her of you. Just go to my son of my high. Oh, Abigail said, I know what my husband said. I heard it. But I come to tell you, I ain't like him. I believe in the man of God. I believe in the word of God. I believe in the prophecy. I know Samuel said you was anointed to be king. Hallelujah. Well, when it's all said and done, you know what Abigail come, don't you? The bride. David married her. Old Nabal died. You hear me? He died. But Abigail stood up for what God had showed her. Praise the Lord. I tell you the time's coming when you're going to have such a burning revelation you ain't going to be able to sit down on it. It's going to come out even when you don't mean for it to. It's going to tell on you. Old Peter tried to cuss and they said you can't even cuss right brother. You're, you're, you're Lord, and God said your mouth, your speech is giving you away. You're trying to sound like one of us but all you sound like is one of him. Hallelujah. Well glory. Amen. And that, and, and that goes right see with what we're reading. One of the, the, the great things that happens. And uh, Lord, there's too much to get in. But uh, I'll say something else in, of, about feasting. Generally, there was a feast held whenever it was announced that the enemy was defeated. Right. Yeah. Anytime a king wrought a great victory right. over an enemy, yeah. first thing he done when they come home uh -huh. was feasted. Right. And I just wanted to tell all of you tonight you can go ahead and feast. Yeah. I'm bringing news from heaven to camp. Hallelujah. The enemy is defeated. Right. He has no power over That's you. Right. He prepares you a table yeah. in the presence of your enemy. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, don't starve yourself no more of life and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Come on, that's what the kingdom is. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Don't starve yourself another day. The enemy is defeated. Pull up to the table tonight. Glory to God. Get you some table food. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My grandmother, God bless her heart. She'd get a kid ready for the table. Hallelujah. She'd get a baby and put them on her lap. Babies like to sit on her lap. She was big and they like to sit up on her. And you know how they learn them babies to eat off the table? You got a, you got a good stomach. She chew that food up, reach in there and get it out of her mouth. Every youngin she kept, she raised them off that table food. She didn't stick no baby food in them. She chewed that table food up. Come on, somebody. She believed them peas and them. Fresh peas was way better for them. She was right, amen. Yeah. And, and she'd learned them to eat from the table. Come on, but how many of you realize that for too long people's been eating chewed over food? Oh, glory to God. If I get technical with it, Isaiah 28 said every table's full of vomit. Amen. You know what that means, don't you? They serving that reese chewed up food. They, they can't even handle a fresh meal. They've got to eat the same thing. I ain't eating the same thing over and over again. There's worlds of spirit we've not tapped into yet. If you think I'm going to starve to death eating somebody else's chewed up food and eating something that somebody digested 50 years ago and they've rehashed it over and oh no sir, he said get yourself weaned off of the milk and drawn from the breast and pour up to the table and feast. Feasting. Well, uh, the man 
see with the picture in his hand is God's way of showing us there's a new order on the scene. And one time we were preaching in Fort Pierce and I didn't know that uh, the pastor had a first cousin who was a preacher and his name was Kenny York. Mm -hmm. And he pastored a church in Alabama, North Alabama, in the mountains. And he slipped in a service one night. <laughs> and while they were having the song service, I shut my eyes. And when I shut my eyes, glory to God, I saw in the spirit of man holding a picture. And he was pouring that picture, uh, getting ready to pour it out. And I said to the Lord, what does this mean? And he said, I've come to pour out a new anointing on Kenny York, gave me his name by the Spirit. And I got up and said to Brother York, because I knew he had a, uh, I knew that they had a cousin that was a preacher, and I thought his name was Ken, but I didn't know. And I said, Brother York, I don't know what this means. And I sure didn't know he was in the building. I said, but, uh, and I told what I, boy, he got straight up. Brother York didn't even know he'd come in. He sat in the back. He got up and come down and got his new anointing. Amen. And I said to my wife after the service, I said, that was the most wonderful feeling to know the Lord spoke that in a way that I didn't have to hunt it or get or try to figure it out. And that's the way I'm looking to flow in these end times in the gifts of the Spirit. Not where I have to wonder, well, well, no, I want to hear it clear enough yeah. to know that I've heard from God. Yeah. Now, Isaiah says when you eat this feast, the covering comes off. Yeah. The fact that it says it's destroyed yeah. off of the face of the people. Yeah. And we know that the regular bread, we're not eating just any bread, but he's the bread. He's breaking the bread. And in Luke 24, when Jesus met the two men on Emmaus, they were, their Bible said their countenance had fallen. Praise the Lord. And Jesus, who was now resurrected, and in a glorified body of which he walked in this earth for 40 days after his resurrection, glory to God, said to, just joined himself to these two men and they didn't have a clue who he was because their eyes were, the Bible said their eyes were uh, with, withholding that they knew him not. Amen. And he said to them, why are your countenances falling? And they said, Aren't you, are you a stranger? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you not know? Yeah. And they got the surprise of their life. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible said he went all the way back to Moses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means he went all the way back to the tabernacle. Yeah. And preached. Yeah. Right up to that day. Yeah. And they turned aside and he acted as though he would have gone on. Mm -hmm. But they compelled him to come in. And when they came in, they sat down to bread. And the Bible said he took the bread, blessed the bread, broke the bread, and gave the bread. And when he gave the bread, their eyes were open. Glory to God that they should know him. And the minute they knew him, he vanished out of their midst. And they looked at one another and said, Did not our hearts burn within us when he spoke so he was known of them in the breaking of the bread glory be to God and he's going to be known of you when you get in the feasting mode oh praise God and quit magnifying the famine and quit talking about what ain't there and start feasting on what is available to you amen and so we know that within the Ark of the Covenant, which is in the what? Most holy place, which is where? On the other side of the veil. Yeah. What's in there? A golden pot called hidden manna. Praise God. That eternal word that did not breathe worms, did not rot, or did not stink. It stayed ever fresh. 
It was not the written word. It was the living word. Hello. It was the eternal word. And in Revelation, we are told the overcomers mm -hmm. shall eat of the hidden manna. Well, glory be to God. But in order to eat the hidden manna, you've got to believe and see that He has rent the veil in twain from top to bottom and you're no more out. Mm -hmm. Well, glory to God. Hey, I go to prepare a place for you. He wasn't going to prepare heaven. That's the first thing he made. Well, glory to God. He was going to open up the most holy realm so that you could walk into the fullness of God and partake of a hidden banner. Praise the name of the Lord. So I don't have time to read it now. I'll just have to paraphrase. But we know that one of the greatest feast moments in the Word of God is the feast of the bride or the wedding feast. Right, exactly. And we find out that it is in the wedding feast, glory to God, that the new wine is revealed. Glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory. And the new wine can't come forth until the old wine runs out. You've got to have a running out before you get a running over. You've got to run out of source except Him. You've got to run out of remedies except His way. Uh, you've got to run out of the old order to get in the new order. And some people is still, uh, glory to God, they proclaim third day, but they're parenting. Not parenting, but parenting. They're just hearing what somebody else says and they still got a second day mentality. Hallelujah. And you know, because you're always warring, always fighting, always battling, and always trying to get something. And if they ain't trying to get something, they're trying to go somewhere. And nothing ain't never good. And nothing's ever wonderful. Amen. That's all locked in the vault of futurism. Hope so, maybe so. One day, finally, after a while. And, and the Lord Jesus has done and finished your works from the foundation of the world and been waiting for 2,000 years for a people to rise up and walk in. Walk through the veil that's rent. The covering that is already destroyed. And experience firsthand the fullness. Spirit, soul, and body. I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord. Faithful is He, glory to God, who calleth you, who also will do it. Praise the Lord. He is our sanctification. It, sanctification in the doctrine is Him. He has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification. Amen. He is that third day. Well, praise the Lord. He is that bread. He is that propitiation. He is our atonement. Purge out the old leaven tonight, folks. Glory be to God. Yeah, learn that He's the Passover. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the door. He's the shepherd. Hallelujah. He's the king. He's the priest of the Most High God. Not only that, but hath made us kings and priests. Unto God in this earth. So having said that about the wedding feast, we know that the wine had to run out before the new wine could come. We know the new wine's coming through His people yeah. because the new wine's found in the cluster. Yeah. Uh, there were six water pots set aside for that. Six is a number of men. Amen. And water was in them first. Hello. Because we've got to be born of water, but then we've got to be born of spirit. It's not good enough to just be born of water. You've got to be born of the Holy Ghost. And so we know that. We know that it's the wedding feast that reveals the wise from the foolish virgins. We know that in the wedding feast there uh, was one who would not identify with the bride, refused to put on a wedding garment, refused to admit there was a wedding, and he was cast out of the feast. Hello? All right. We know there's a difference between the body and the bride. There's a difference between the church and the bride. 
The church is those made up of part again believers and many of them even spirit filled. But we know the bride is she who has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying in this day. And so when we come over in the book of Esther in the first chapter, we read where King Ahasuerus decides and he was a king who sat on his throne with great victory and he ruled from India all the way to Ethiopia. Glory to God, he ruled the largest known division of that day. And when you read that, just like when you read about Cyrus, you're seeing a picture of the king on his throne. Conquered. That's right. That's right. Ruling, right. authority, yeah. dominion, right. and power. Right. And so the first thing he does is for six months, he gives a feast. My God, what a feast. Six months long it lasted. Uh -huh. And it was for all the princes and all the nobles. And I'm going to tell you folks tonight, the ministry has to go into it in order to bring the people into it. Yeah, that's right. Well, glory to God. It's time for every prince and every noble in the kingdom of God to respond to the call of the king and come into this hour of feasting. Glory to God. And it says that in that feast he revealed unto him the glorious riches of his kingdom. And Ephesians, the first chapter, tells us the same thing. When our eyes get in line, we'll know what is the riches, glory to God, hallelujah, of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power unto us who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ Jesus when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His own right hand in heavenly places, Far above the glory to God, all principalities, powers, mights, and dominions, and things that are named in this world or in that which is to come, and have given him to be the head over all things in his church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen. Amen. So we're not dealing with a dinky rinky man that tries to overthrow something and just has a little following. We're looking at a man who is ruling from India to Ethiopia, which was a known region of the world in that day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he said, you kings and princes and nobles, come here. Stay here with me for six months. I want to show you the excellency. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Of my kingdom and the glory and the riches of my kingdom. And it came to pass when six months had expired, the king decided that he must extend the feast to all the people. Yeah. And he made this feast happen for seven days. Well, glory be to God. We're in the seventh day. Yeah. We're in the seventh day from Adam which is the same as the third day because Jesus showed up, glory to God, in between the third and fourth day or the fourth and fifth day. Are you hearing me? So we're in both. We fulfill both. My God. We're in the seventh day from Adam, but we're in the third day from Christ. And the king said that not only let us have a feast, but he said, let's move the feast to the garden. Right, right. <laughs> right where it all began, in the garden. And then the king said, we, any wine won't do. We're going to serve royal wine. Oh, hallelujah. You're beginning to drink what he drinks. That's proceeding word ministry. Not hearsay, not echoes, voices, 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 not echoes. You understand that? And then the other thing he said was, the wine's going to be served in golden vessel. Praise the name of the Lord. Everybody knows gold means his divine nature. It's time for you to lay hold of them truths. You are partakers of his divine nature. That's the DNA of God, the divine nature attitude. It's God's DNA. Yeah. And then the king, it was said that the vessels were vessels of diversity. Glory be to God. That's because 
you've got to have change. You can't put new wine mm -hmm. in old wine skin. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And these preachers right now, they've got this kingdom word. It's in them. It's boiling over. And people is staring in their face and don't no more know what's being said in their midst than a man on the moon. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot put this new wine in the old wine skin. Mm -hmm. They still believe in barely holding on, barely getting by, yeah. survival of the fittest, yeah. what they can do. Yeah. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. they, and that false humility. That's the biggest hoax ever come out of Pentecost was that false humility. I'm just nothing. I'm just a, and and people is not going to receive this new word as long as they in an old wine skin. Right. Moab remaineth the same. Her taste is not changed. Her scent has not changed because she's not been emptied from vessel. The vessel. Hallelujah. Everybody wants it to be poured in their cup. Yeah. No, sir, you're going to have to throw your water pot away yeah. and get the well. Yeah. You, yes. you all in hunting a cup or something, get the well. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. And so, whenever he got to the height of that feast, and we'll, we'll tell it here, and well, we better land it here, not yeah. tell it. I'm finished some other time, but he gets to the height of that feast. You know what he wants to happen, don't you? He wants to bring his bride and present her. Yeah. And he wants to crown her. Mm -hmm. Well, glory to God. See, that's the first fruit of the Lamb coming in yeah. to power. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, later on, there's a woman going to press her way by force. That's right. That's right. And she's going to hold the scepter. But right now, she wasn't in the picture. Right. No, Queen Vashti. She was doing having her own feast right. one door away. Yeah. <laughs> and I ain't got time to get in with you, but it was a Pentecost of meeting. Yeah. It was a Pentecost feast one door over. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't no men there. There wasn't no order. There wasn't no head there. All it was was Sodi's feast. Mm -hmm. Well, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the king, you got to understand something. For this feast to fully come to its high part, you're going to have to shut the other one down. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, glory. Yeah. And he said, I won't pass the in here. I want to crown her. I want to show her off. Amen. If you don't like being showed off, you better stop right now. Because the Lord Jesus, the heavenly groom, has every intention of putting his bride on display in this earth. He's going to show off his wealth, his power, his gifts, his fruits, his anointing, his name, his life, all through his bride. Hey, glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And so he called for and he sent seven eunuchs to go get her as seven spirits of God that are before the throne. And she said, I ain't coming. And I'll close with this verse. You know this verse well. Isaiah 4 said, In that day, seven women are going to take hold of one man. And this is what he's going to say. We'll wear our own apparel and eat our own bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the way the church operates now. And then it's instances. We preach our doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. There ain't no doctrine but Christ. That's right. Amen. And if he reveals to you that what you're saying or teaching ain't in the book, yeah. you're going to have to throw it out. Because yeah. yeah. if it ain't in the book, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't kingdom. And if it ain't spirit, it ain't kingdom. Some people still can't get a hold of that. They think kingdom is just people sat out and swallow the dictionary, you know, talking all them big words. That ain't the kingdom. The kingdom is the power of God manifesting right. in operation in the church. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you can write and read and, 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 and memorize and name off 
uh, 30 paragraphs at the time. If there ain't no spirit on it, it ain't kingdom. Amen. And so he said, seven women going to take over to one man. Oh, God, what we as kids, everybody preach at, you know. They say it's coming a time when there's going to be in a ratio in the earth of seven to one for every man. Well, that's just stupid. Seven women in the church. There's seven women in Revelation. There's seven churches. Yeah. Going to take hold of one man, but the one man is always the man, Christ Jesus. And then it said, let us preach what we want. Let us wear our own apparel, because your apparel meant who you're associated with. Only let us be called by your name. Yeah. Hello, yeah. you ain't going to get his name mm -hmm. without you entering into a covenant relationship yeah. with him. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. He won't consummate. Now, he won't give his name until he consummates his bride. By that, you've got to be willing to buy His truth amen. and His order and His revelation and His word. Can you say amen? amen. You've got to be willing for Him to produce through you. That's right. yeah. That's By God, the liberty yeah. of the sons of God. Right. Hallelujah. Father, thank You for Your word tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank You for Your anointing. This congregation in there here in the air. My God, let every one of us get in the holy place and conceive a fresh word from the Father. Go forth in power, demonstration. My God, not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Don't let our faith stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, folks. We'll see you back here Friday night. 6.30 for the Christmas banquet and then back here Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Amen.